right guys, so let's have a look at what a perfect park looks like. It's very simple. What we do is we, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna approach, right? We're gonna pull up alongside the car that we wanna park behind. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get an angle, okay? That magical angle is gonna be about 45 degrees. Once we've got our angle, we're going to go straight back so that we're moving back towards the curb. Once we've done that, we're going to then tuck the car into the actual slot. And the last thing we're going to do is we're gonna adjust ourselves. We're gonna bring ourselves forward to make sure we're one to two meters from the car in front. Guys, that's all there is to it if we break it down. So this time, let's look from overhead. So first and foremost, we're gonna do the approach. Left hand indicator on, and we should be doing a left side shoulder check. It's exactly the same as pulling into the curb, okay? If you guys can pull into the curb, you know, you put your left hand indicator on, you do a left side shoulder check, you pull into the curb. We're gonna pull up alongside the car. Now, we're going to want, when we pull up alongside the car, we're gonna want about half a meter in this space here, all right? Normally when you drive past a car on the road, you leave about one meter worth of space. That's about the same space it takes to open a door. When we're parking though, we wanna be a little bit closer, about a half a meter away, okay? The second thing I want you to notice right now is that we also have space between where the back of the yellow car is and where the back of the parked car is. Now, this is really important because one of the most complicated bits that you guys have when it comes to parking is knowing as you're rolling backwards when you're supposed to flick into that angle. Well, here's the trick. If you set the car up with that space tail behind the other one, you are already in position immediately to go into the angle. So this is just taking a whole bunch of work and hassle off you. Okay, so remember we're half a meter from the car, Oh, to the, uh, we're half a meter out from the car and we're a tail behind the other car, all right? Now we're gonna rotate. We're gonna put ourselves to left lock and we're gonna rotate the car. Now, if we have a look here, you can see that the car is on this angle right here. This angle is 45 degrees, all right? It is exactly the same as most pizza slices, all right? Pizza slice, 45 degrees. You can remember that. Surely, with all the dominoes you guys eat, Pizza slice is all we need. Why is 45 degrees important? Well, if we don't do 45, let's say we only do like 25, and we do here, we're gonna go way too far back to the curb here, and we're not actually going to be able to park in a reasonable amount of space. If we do a big angle like this, right, more like 80 degrees, then what happens is when we rotate the front back in, it's actually going to touch the car in front of us because there's not enough space. So the angle you start with is what determines how far you are from the car that you're parking behind when you reach the curb. If you do a small angle, you're gonna be way too far back. You do a big angle, you're gonna hit because you're way too close. So make sure you remember 45 degrees. If you wanna err on the side of caution, a little bit low, below 45 degrees is the magic number. All right, so we've got our 45 degrees. Now we're gonna start going back straight. We're gonna go back straight until we are one meter from the curb with the back left-hand wheel. So what does that mean? Well, it's this little space here. See, this, this is about one meter. The easiest way to remember it is that the gutter in New South Wales, ooh, that bit right there, yep, that gray bit there, that's 50 centimeters in New South Wales. So that plus that again is exactly where your back left-hand tire is gonna be when you wanna start tucking it around, okay? I'll tell you some extra tricks, stay on the video and I'll show you some extra tricks to know where that is when you can't see it. We get the car parallel with the curb and then we move it once we're parallel, we just wanna come forward and what we're after is one to two meters from the car in front. So our final parking space is going to be here and that space there needs to be one to two meters. All right, so basically you shouldn't quite be able to lay down between you and the car that you are parked behind, all right? That's it, guys. There's an approach, like pulling into the, the curb. We've got an angle, which is 45 degrees. We're gonna go straight back into where our back left-hand wheel is one meter from the curb, and then we're gonna tuck it and get parallel. Then we're gonna move forward so that we are one to two meters from the car in front, and that is our final position. Let's do it from inside the car now, though, because now you've seen it, what it looks like from the outside. Let's make it work from the inside of the car. So our left indicator's on, and we've already done our left side head check on the way in. As we're going to roll up, what we're going to do is we're going to stop early so that we're rolling forward into position. It's much easier. And where I like to stop is with the left-hand mirror 
at the back of the vehicle we're going to park behind. Now this does two things. First of all, every time you put the car in reverse, you actually have to do a head check out the rear window, right? And we can just save one of those, right? Because remember, you missed three head checks, you failed the test. So let's just avoid that by rolling forward into position rather than reversing into position. The second thing is, is if we stop with our mirror at the back of the car that we're parking behind, our car is now blocking the space that we're going to use to enter the park. So if we've got some numbnuts behind us who's not really paying attention and just following us, at this point now we've stopped. They've gone, hang on, what's actually going on here? Now that means that if Captain Numbnuts is behind you, hasn't been paying attention, you can now look in your mirror, see he's back there, realize, hang on a second, it's safe to go, put your hand out and send him past, all right? And that means that you don't have any pressure on you as you do your park. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly in the test what conditions they have, but this is just another way to reduce the pressure that's on you through the course of this maneuver, all right? So we're all good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna roll forward. And what we wanna do is we wanna roll forward until we can see the back of the car we wanna park behind in our blind spot on our back left-hand passenger window. All right, this is in the car how you tell that your tail is still behind the other car's tail. So I told you we want our tail behind on that drone footage. Well, from inside the car, you just wanna look at right that there. That lets you know, if you can still see the back, that you're in good position. If you lose sight of that back, if that keeps going this way and you lose sight of it, you've gone too far forward, which means if you rotate, you're gonna hit the car. So keep, whoops, that way. Keep that in your blind spot, all right? It's really, really important. Then, once we're in position, we're gonna put it in reverse. First and foremost, look, if your brain thinks I wanna go backwards, the first thing you do is change the gear shift to say backwards, because it's nothing worse than you start thinking about going backwards, do your wheel, take your foot off the brake, and the car lurches forward in towards the nose of the other car because you forgot to do the reverse. So make it easy for yourself. As soon as your brain starts thinking about changing the direction, first thing, put it in reverse. The next thing we're gonna do once we've done reverse is we're gonna check out the back window, the head check for reverse, and we're gonna check over the right shoulder, okay? That way we know that we're clear. Now you would have noticed at the exact same time, I've taken the steering wheel, and I've turned it all the way to left lock, all right? That means where the steering wheel won't go any further left. Wait till the end of the video, I'll show you some tricks about how to make this steering really well. All right, so we're at left lock, we've checked both sides, now we're gonna rotate to get that 45 degree angle. Now you realize I'm just keeping an eye on my mirrors and my cameras, and I get to this point. Now, if we look straight out the front of the car, it's normally quite easy to see what 45 degrees is. Sometimes if you have a look like just up there, you can see the reverse camera and my reverse camera has got a couple of lines on it. You might be able to see 45 degrees there, but basically I don't see many people successfully see it in the left-hand side mirror, okay? I think it's easiest just to look out the front of the car, your brain programs what 45 degrees looks like, and that's the most consistent way I've found to teach others to do it. At this point, we're gonna bring our wheels straight because right, we've got our 45 degree angle. We straighten our wheels. We're also gonna check our right side blind spot and our left side blind spot because we're sideways across the street, okay? The only times you ever check both blind spots really are when you're the front car at a set of traffic lights, you gotta check both for motorbikes or if you're sideways across the street. So during a parking or during three point turns, you're checking both. We're coming back, back, back. Now, what we wanna do is the back left hand wheel, we want it to be one to two meter, uh, sorry, we want it to be one meter from the curb. Now you saw just then, there's a little trick that I actually, I'll just come back. Here's a little trick. Sometimes you can't see the curb because there's a bit of rain on it, right? But if you actually have a look, you'll realize that the left hand mirror here, right, this mirror here is actually in line with the right side of the car we're parking behind. So it's kind of like the mirror has crossed in behind the car that we're parking behind. And the other way we can tell is if we look in the left-hand mirror is the curb. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look again in the left-hand mirror this time. So not at the mirror, but you can see the door handle in the left-hand mirror. Now, when we first started, the curb was just above the door handle. As we've gone backwards, the curb has been coming down the body of the car, poking in lower and lower because we're getting closer to it. Now it's poking in underneath the door handle. So the left-hand mirror alongside the car you're parking behind, and the curb has gone under the door handle. So at this point now, we're gonna to go to right lock. So we started off putting the wheels towards the curb, then we do them straight. Now the, curb, the wheels are gonna be away from the curb, all right? So full right lock, 
And now we're going to start rolling backwards to tuck it into the spot. Now, the most important thing that we want to do again is we, again, want to be watching this left-hand mirror. What we're looking for is you're going to see in a second that you can actually see with the body of the car and the curb, you can tell when you're parallel. So as we're going back, we're looking, we start to see the curb appear. And it's about this moment right there. You can see the body of the car is parallel with the curb. Let me get out of there. See that? You can see in your left-hand mirror real easy. Now we're going to straighten the wheels and we're going to drive up so that we're one to two meters from the car in front. Now the best way to think about one to two meters from the car in front is that our bonnet will line up with the top of their bumper bar or the bottom of their boot. Now every car is a little bit different. This is just a general rule. So give it a shot and then get out and make sure it's one to two meters. But what we're looking for, and I hope you understand this about all of these reference markers I'm giving you, what we're looking for is consistency the same way every time so that you make it good. Make sure you're parallel, make sure you're one to two meters, put it into park, and that will be the end of the maneuver. They do not mark you until you put it into park, all right? So let's have a look at it again. Left hand indicator on. We do our left side head check right now on the way in. So that is the same as pulling into the curb. We're going to roll up, be about a half a meter from the car, stop with our mirror at the back. There's no one behind us, so we're just going to roll forward straight into position where the back of their car is in my blind spot. We're going to rotate the wheel towards the curb lock, left lock. We're going to rotate and get that 45 degrees. The second we get to 45 degrees, we're then going to straighten the wheels. Now, if you've got to stop at 45 degrees, have the car stationary and straighten the wheels, do that to begin with. Just do each piece of this bit by bit. It will all start to come together in one smooth motion in time. Do it right properly, even if you have to break it down into piece by piece, stop, start, stop, start, because if you can do it properly, you'll be able to do it smoothly eventually, okay? We go straight back until we can see the rear wheel. Now, you can see the rear wheel here is, whoops, from here to here. That's your one meter, all right? And then once we get through that, we get it parallel with the gutter. Remember, we're looking in the left-hand mirror for that. Once we're parallel, we straighten the wheels and we drive it up to be one to two meters from the car in front, right? So that's all there is to parking. Now, a lot of times I see when people are parking, they'll put it left and then they'll start rotating around. And a lot of times they'll go all the way back right because they don't know where straight is. Well, here's how you figure out where straight is, all right? Here's a steering wheel. Left lock means we turn the wheel left until it turns no further. So this is what left lock looks like. We rotate the wheel and it won't turn any further, okay? That is left lock, all right? Now, from left lock, if we bring the wheel to be flat again, just here, the wheels are still pointing left. So we've got left lock and then we bring the wheel to be flat again. The wheels are still pointing the same way as they were in lock, still pointing left. If we want the wheels to be straight, all we have to do is give it one more full turn. Right now we know without moving at all that the wheels are pointing straight. The same thing applies to right lock. So if we're gonna spin it all the way to right lock, right lock is where the wheel no longer goes any further, bring it back flat, the wheels are still pointing right. But if we do one more rotation, the second time the wheel is flat after a lock, we know the wheels are straight. So this way, you can understand why we approach and then we put the wheels to left lock to get our angle. That way, we always do the same angle. We're consistent. Then when we want to go straight, we bring the wheel flat and we do one more turn. That way, we're always going to be going straight backwards. Then when we want to go to right, we spin it all the way to lock and then we get a consistent tuck. Then we can make it straight again, close to the gutter without having to roll back and forth. And then we can roll up forward. This will stop you from doing a little dig out, which sometimes happens when you guys actually get parallel and then because you haven't straightened the wheel, you actually kick yourselves back out of parallel and it becomes a bit of a mess. The other reason why I like to use lock, right? This is just my personal reason, is that it helps train your brain. So lock is the tightest the wheels will turn, which means it's the smallest space you can get out of. And if you get used to parking and lock, your brain is naturally going to learn exactly how much space you need to move the car. And it'll become a lot more secondhand, like second nature from you rather than being this complicated thing. So while I put the video on the background, here's some bits for you about the test because you guys often worry about parking in the piece test, but I've got some great news for you. It's all in your favor, all right? The first thing is, you're only gonna do it on flat ground. I mean, maybe a slight incline, but it's never gonna be a hill that's nasty. Second thing, you're only going to do it behind a car like I'm demonstrating here. Never between cars, because too many learners ran into the car behind them, so they stopped doing that. So nothing to worry about. 
Third thing, it doesn't actually have to be perfect, all right? Basically, the most important thing about your park is that you do the head checks properly and that you do your indicators properly and that you look properly and make sure everything is safe. There is no stopwatch. So if you want to do slowly, so you want to arrive slowly, stopped, do a check, get your angle, stop, make sure your angle's right. Yep, go straight back, stop. You can do that because there's no stopwatch. They just want to see that you can get it in there, all right? Remember, they know you're a learner. They don't expect you to be as good as someone who lives in New York, all right? Those people are a whole nother breed that drive cars in New York and park on the side of the street. They can fit a car in almost anything. It's quite astonishing to watch. The next thing is you can use more space than you can in the real world. As I said to you before, you can actually use up to seven meters behind the car. Now, basically, that means that... From your point of view of a driver, when you're doing this, so when you're doing this turn and you're actually bringing it in this way, right? From here, when you're looking at the car in front of you, as long as you don't ever see anything more than the wheels, you're fine. Like you actually get to use that space. If you can see, if you've gone so far back that you can see where the road is touching the ground, you've probably gone too far, right? But when you're doing a tuck, if you can only see bumper butt, mate, you're all good. There is nothing to worry about. And lastly, remember, you're allowed to dry steer. So that means you're allowed to turn the steering wheels while sitting still. Now, just a quick note on dry steering, okay? Old guys will carry on till the cows come home, telling you, you can't dry steer. The steering rack will fall out and it'll break the car. Well, yeah, that happened in the 50s, all right? Here's how you've got to look at it. In the 50s, we had tires that were made predominantly out of natural rubber. And if you've ever taken an eraser and twisted it on a piece of paper, those little bits of fluff that come off, well, that used to happen to your tires when you do it, all right? That's back in the 1950s. We had no power steering. So trying to turn the wheel was really, really heavy. So if you had the car rolling a little bit, it was always much easier to turn the wheel. Nowadays, we have power steering, so you can turn the wheel sitting still. It makes no difference. Third of all, manufacturing tolerances weren't as good. That's why old Harleys break down all the time, because basically if they made a tube and a rod... It would bounce around like this because they couldn't make them the same size. We've got computer manufacturing now. These things are tight as it gets. It does. It barely wiggles nowadays. So a lot of the car has changed in 70 years. And modern technology means that the car can handle having the steering wheel turned while it's sitting still. All right. Yes, 70 years ago it couldn't. Now it really can. All right. I had a Camry with 600,000 kilometers on it. And it was an ex-taxi and a driving school car. You cannot abuse a car any more than that. And it still lasted to 600,000 kilometers and the steering rack never fell out. So unless you've got evidence to the contrary, I'm going to say that it's all right for your car. All right. The next piece to remember is that back in the 1950s, pedestrians were a much higher quality. All right. You've got to remember there were no pedestrians in 1950s with headphones in. Just didn't happen. So they were listening to cars around. There were no pedestrians in the 1950s watching a movie in their hand as they walk home. OK, and then you've also got to think and realize that people are on way more pharmaceuticals nowadays and it does make people doughy. Whether you like it or not, I'm not here for that argument. People on antidepressant and antipsychotics and all the other lists of these things, anti-anxiety medication, it makes you a little doughy. All right. You're not quite as sharp. So cars are better nowadays than they used to be and pedestrians are worse than they used to be. And that's why I believe that this is a much easier way to park. It's much safer. In fact, when I was a taxi driver, I used to use this exact method to park on the rank at 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning when everyone was sitting in the gutter spewing and the pubs had just let everyone out and we were trying to pick people up and taxi drivers were asleep on the rank. The worst case, and it was raining and foggy and misty, and I was still able to park with this. So if it served me as taxi driver in the worst of my times, I'm sure it will serve you. Anyway, guys, that's it for parallel parking. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you want to see another video, tell me what video you want to see. I'll keep the dash cams going. Until next time.